Good morning, everyone. This is Marcy Zavala, and we have reached the end of the alphabet. I have been going through the letters of the alphabet over the last almost eight months, and we have started with A is for anemia, and today is Z, which is going to be for zebras. Okay, so for those of you that don't already know me, I am the owner of Up to Date Nutrition, and I teach you all things nutrition as well as a little physical therapy because I do have a physical therapy background. I've been a PT for over 22 years, um, loving that, but also totally digging into the nutrition portion. So let's get into it. Today's going to be kind of a quick one, and it is Z is for zebras. Now you're probably wondering what in the world zebras have to do with nutrition, and I'm going to let you in on this, but we're going to start back a little bit. Have you ever seen the meme that says, don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. Now that is going on. I've seen it on coffee mugs. I've seen it, you know, everywhere. And there is a bit of truth to that. And But what does that have to do with zebras? Okay. So in the medical world, a zebra is a very unlikely diagnosis. And you compare that to a horse, which is the most common thing. So for example, somebody has a mild cough that kind of comes and goes. It's most likely that you've got a cold. And then the zebra would be something like tuberculosis, okay? So when you are looking for something in your health, look for something common first before you go down a rabbit hole into something that is, you know, really rare or, you know, potentially fatal. So they say, when you hear hoofbeats, look for horses, not for zebras. So after all that we've covered through a lot of disease processes, a lot of ways to attack that with your nutrition, things to look for in nutrition, nutrition. I want you to think about that. Always look for the most common thing first. For example, if you have if you're somebody who has a lot of fatigue and possibly weight gain, I wouldn't necessarily go, you know, Google search for fatigue and weight gain and then go down the rabbit hole of, you know, you've got some sort of fatal disease. Maybe start with diet and exercise first, okay? Um, now, that is to be said, I spoke with this about my husband right before we went on, um, to be said is that that doesn't mean we don't want you doing your own research. That does not mean I say you should just listen blindly to your medical provider. That is just saying don't look for the... Um, for the rare thing, look for the obvious things first. You gotta fix those obvious things first. So with the idea of weight gain and fatigue, diet and exercise is ideally the best place to start. And where do you start with that? With the diet portion, that's what I'm gonna to cover today, is eliminate your processed foods. Okay, you guys all know that eating junk food is not good for you and is not gonna do you any good. Now, are you, are you somebody who can eat a lot of junk food now? Are you healthy because of it or despite it? So that's another thing you want to think about. Nobody really needs to go in and eat a lot of, you know, Twinkies, Ho-Hos, and I'm going to throw Reese's in there for one of my particular patients. You don't need to eat that. And just because your body has been able to fend that off for 50 plus years doesn't necessarily mean you should continue to eat it, that something else isn't going to happen down the line. So if you eliminate your processed foods, and that does not necessarily mean ground beef or salami per se, and yes, there are exceptions and caveats to that. What I want you to think of is the stuff that is in a box that has a label, um, that has a UPC code for the most part, is the stuff that you want to get rid of in your diet. If you have that occasionally, it's probably going to be okay. There are obviously always exceptions to this rule. The next step is to make sure you're hydrating properly. We've talked about this several times during this alphabet series, and hydration is not just water. If you are drinking too much water, you know, there's still a fad out there where people are eat, drinking a gallon of water a day. Um, it's just, you're gonna kind of mess up your own electrolytes and you need to add electrolytes in. Now, you don't need sugar to get in proper electrolytes, okay? I just want you to know that. There are plenty of people out there and there's plenty of studies out there that show this, that you do not necessarily need sugar in order to get the sodium and potassium and magnesium into your body. That's actually kind of a false um, conclusion that was made a while ago. And in the post that goes with this, I will link a lot of articles that go with that. And then the next thing that I always recommend people is that they get adequate protein. Now, if you are getting adequate protein in your diet, 
And that, and, and interestingly enough, is more than what the RDA recommends. Because if you look at what the RDA recommends and then their formula for it, those two don't even add up. And I've gone into this in past post too, which I will link to about protein. You need protein at all three meals of your day. And no, you don't need six meals a day. You are eat, If you are getting protein in at least in all the meals a day, then you are going to do much better. Your body's going to be able to heal itself. Your body is going to function better. You're actually going to reduce your appetite, or not your appetite, you're going to reduce your cravings for sugar on top of that. So adequate protein is the third key that I tell people they need. And then after that, it becomes very individualized, and that's what I do. That's where we go in and figure out what your body is liking, what your body is not liking, and how to adjust to it and how to heal your small intestine. Most, mostly it's the small intestine because that's where almost all of your nutrients are absorbed. Yes, there are some up the chain and a few down the chain, but in your small intestine is where your immunity is. That's where you absorb the mass majority of your nutrients. And it's also going to regulate your mood. It's going to regulate your appetite. And there's just a whole host of things. So if this is something that you are still struggling with on what to eat, Start here, start eliminating the processed foods. That's again, your Twinkies, your Ho-Hos, your box stuff, chips, crackers, cookies, donuts. I hate to say that one because everybody knows how much I like the donuts, but I do not eat them all the time. Second, hydrate properly. Get your electrolytes in, especially if you're in a hot, humid climate or if you're in a hot, dry climate. Even people who are in, in the temperate zones where the temperatures don't fluctuate much, you still need to get electrolytes in. Now, how much you need is gonna, again, be very individualized. Everything is individualized. And then get adequate protein at all of your meals, okay? You can't have just your protein at dinner. That's not gonna cut it. You need to get it evenly spread, spread throughout the day, okay, you guys? If you would like to have continued help and advice on how to implement all of this stuff, again, that's what I did. Head on over to my website. That's uptodatenutrition.com, and that's with the number two and sign up, reach out to me. I'm also on all the social media sites and we can get you squared away so we can figure out what's going on. And I hope you guys have a rest of the good, <laughs> a good rest of your Wednesday. And I will see you guys next week for a whole brand new series that we're going to do and get everything squared away. Okay, have a good rest of your day.